Belts Pelsi have the following features. So let's imagine that this is a person. This is the face of the person. Okay, I will try to draw some drawings here. So we will draw the eyes first. So the following features apply to Bell's palsy. The side that is affected, so if this is the right eye and this is the left eye, what you will notice is the person will not be able to close the right eye, whereas he or she is able to close the left eye. So the right eye appears more open. When a person tries to frown, there is no wrinkling or barely any wrinkling on the affected side. You will have good wrinkling on the side that is unaffected. When you look at the nasolabial folds, so nasolabial folds are folds that normally are present between the nose and the lips. So on the side that's affected, you will not see the nasolabial fold very clearly, whereas it would be very clear on the unaffected side. When a person tries to smile, the smile will turn to the side that's unaffected. So it will appear sort of more of a crooked smile with the smile sort of directing more towards the unaffected side. So let's draw some hair here. Let's just give this person some hair. And okay. So what are the features? The person is not able to close the eye on the side. When the person is trying to frown, there is no wrinkling on the forehead on the affected side. The nasolabial fold is flat or poorly formed on the affected side and the smile is asymmetric because of facial weakness on the side of the lesion of the uh, facial nerve. So those are the four features. Normally when we are examining a patient, I would ask them to close both eyes and a person will have very difficulty closing the right eye. In this case, if it was the right Bell's palsy, I will ask the person to whistle. The person will not be able to whistle. If the patient is trying to drink, water or fluid will be drooling out of the affected side. So those are some of the features of Bell's palsy. Now, what does, how do you define Bell's palsy? Bell's palsy is an idiopathic, unilateral, lower motor neuron type of a facial weakness. So number one, it is idiopathic, meaning the cause is not known, idiopathic. It is unilateral. And it is a lower motor neuron type of a facial weakness. Lower, when we say lower motor neuron, it means that the upper half as well as the lower half of the face is involved. If somebody had a facial weakness just related to the stroke, it is usually the lower half of the face that's involved. So that is with the stroke, but with a lower motor neuron type of a facial paralysis, you get both the upper and lower motor neuron type of weakness. So let's move on. When you see a patient with Bell's palsy, it's extremely important to try asking other questions that will help you localize the lesion in the seventh nerve. So you want to specifically ask if the patient has normal tearing, if the tears are coming out fine, tears. Number two, you want to ask if sounds on one ear appear louder than the other. This is called hyperacusis. You will want to ask the patient if the food tastes the same. So that is basic, basically asking about taste sensation. This helps to localize the area that is affected by the lower motor neuron lesion. If you want to go in more details, 
look at my video about facial nerve lesions that will go give you more details. Let's say now that you have established that this person has lower motor neuron type of a facial paralysis. And the next question to ask is, if this patient has, you want to do a thorough examination of the ear. So examine the ear of the patient. Examine the ear to make certain that this person does not have any infection. There is no pus coming out of the ear and that is something to rule out. Bell's palsy is not synonymous with lower motor neuron type of facial paralysis. Bell's palsy is a term that is used when the cause is unknown or it's an idiopathic lower motor neuron type of facial paralysis. Okay, so that's one thing. What do you do with patients when patients present to the emergency room? Of course, I'm not providing any advice to patients who may have a seventh nerve weakness, you need to go and see your doctors and get an advice or suggestions or management from your doctors. In general, anyone with a facial weakness where they are not able to close their eyes, it is important to advise them to use artificial tears so that the eyes do not get dry. So artificial tears is something to consider. Number two is to make sure that the patient patches the eye, put a patch on the eye at night, patches the eye so that a person does not get a dry eye and does not damage the cornea. There was a study that was published a number of years ago in the New England Journal of Medicine comparing patients who received steroids or antiviral treatments or a combination of steroids and antiviral treatments versus just getting a placebo. And what they found was that steroids definitely had an advantage over the antiviral or the placebo in trying to minimize the facial weakness and facial deficit. So those are a few things to keep in mind. I hope you like the video. I will appreciate if you can like it, share it with your friends, and put down any comments if you have any specific questions or concerns. Thank you so much for your attention.